get about a pound of beef short ribs here. I'm going to season this with about a tablespoon of coarse salt and just a little bit of paprika. Maybe it's a teaspoon, something like that. And then this is going to get cooked in a hot pan. A little bit of olive oil in the pan. Just start browning this. Yeah, the meat's well browned. I'm going to move it off the platter. I've got, uh, in order to deglaze the pan, I'm using 300 milliliters of water. Yeah, you could use chicken stock for that. In this case, it doesn't make any difference. I'm using uh, one of the North chicken stock cubes. Yeah, I know Marco is a shill for Nor. I'm not. I'm using this because it's practical. Works great. I'm just going to powder this into there. Scrape the bottom and let this cool off just a little bit because <laughs> it's really <laughs> going crazy here. And then we're going to arrange the meat in the pan. For the braise. Okay, I've got the pan that's going to be used for the braise. I'm putting onion slices in here. It's about 90 grams of onion slices. Then put the meat in. We just browned. And that tomato sauce. That's really just pureed tomatoes uh, from Italy. And here's the uh, juices from the pan. Just add with the chicken stock. And the red wine. And I'm going to put in a couple of bay leaves. A couple of cloves of garlic I cut up into quarters. Now something a little different. Normally, I just put the lid on it. This pan, this pan has a little pinhole in here. It's more than a pinhole. It's quite a hole. In this case, that's going to let out way too much moisture because of the extremely long brace time here. We can't do that. So you got to seal this thing up pretty good. So here we have what it looks like after 10 hours. Pretty good. Now we're going to have to uh, pick the, the bones out of it and put it in the blender next. Show you how easy it is to get the bones out. You find it. There it goes, slides right out. That's it. There were only two two bones in it. Yeah. And after you've moved the meat, you just start using a fork like this and combing through the onions, and you'll find the the bay leaves in it. And this is the end result. Very nice, very smooth, amazingly smooth beef uh, <coughs> ragu. In pretty intensely flavored with beef. For, for soups or some other purpose. But this is the part we want. We want the, the center here. We'll just roughly chop this. This is what's going to get cooked with the pancetta. Just 
spent 20 grams of butter. It's going to melt first. Okay, let's see. Let's see the fennel. Two teaspoons of brown sugar. Uh, you can use regular sugar. I'm using light brown sugar. This can help the caramelization begin. And this is going to cook on a medium high heat, about, well, actually about six and a half on one to ten. You can stir it every once in a while, but let it, let it caramelize well. And while this is sauteing, I prepared the minced, uh, I didn't really mince, I cut into, into small pieces of the shallot. Uh, I don't want to mince this too small, it will actually burn. And uh, if, I, if I was using whole pancetta, I would have sliced it, but I, I have a packaged Italian product here that's already sliced, so uh, yeah, to keep good. this from uh, burning and just caramelizing, I'm uh, turning the heat down just a little bit when you start seeing it like this, when the butter's all browned and you've got quite a lot of um, caramelizations already began on the fennel. I'm turning the heat down to a 4 on 1 to 10. I'm going to keep cooking it for quite a while. It's been cooking about 15 minutes now and um, this is this is a very good stage to add the next step. You've got a, a lot of deep caramelization here. The next step is it's actually going to start to burn a little bit if you're not careful. So I'm going to add all that pancetta. It's thinly sliced. And the shallot. Stir it around and keep cooking. Yes. Okay, we have uh, brunoise of uh, celery root, carrots, and uh, onions. Of course, onions don't naturally fall into quite as neat cubes <laughs> because they, they break apart. And we're going to blanch these. Now, if this was a, a, a very famous Michelin star restaurant, which I won't name, I worked at, uh, we would always use separate pots of water. Uh, to keep the flavors of the individual vegetables separate, but to me this is, this is just absurd in a case like this where they're all going to be cooked together anyway. So uh, I'm going to actually put the celery root in first. This is simmering salted water. I'm putting the celery root in first because it's going to take the longest cooking time. <laughs> Not that any of them is going to take very long. Um, also you might notice I'm using um, the equal amounts of <coughs> celery uh, carrot and onion. That's because there's already some onion in the in the meat. Now, normally I would use more onion, but since this meat is already cooked with onion, that's that's enough. Now I'll put the carrots in. As you can see, it was about 30 seconds later. They just need to be blanched briefly. First of all, they're going to cook pretty fast because of the size of them. And this is not the only cooking they're going to get. And after about I don't know, 15 seconds, I'm adding the onion. And about 15 seconds after that, I've got a strainer sitting here ready. I'm going to drain these off, put them, rinse them off in a little bit of cool water, and that'll be that'll be our uh, vegetable preparation here. That's good enough. Okay, so the only difference here is that in the restaurant we have a big machine that looks like a deep fryer for cooking the, the pasta in here. I'm just using a pot of uh, water to rolling boil. Uh, well, the pasta begins cooking. I'm going to add a little bit of olive oil to this. And here we have our previously blanched vegetables. We'll put a couple tablespoons of those in. Don't forget to give the pasta stir every once in a while. Okay, these have been sautéing for a couple of minutes. Now I'm going to add that uh, pancetta and fennel mixture, about uh, a tablespoon, tablespoon and a half. And we're going to sauté this just a little bit, maybe one more minute. 
the important thing here is to get some color on the vegetables. It may be difficult to see in the video, but, but there's some golden colors developing here. We want to make sure that we see that before we proceed. Then I'm going to add an ounce to an ounce and a half of wine. If it's in a restaurant, I'm going to use about an ounce, about 30 milliliters. At home, I'm going to use a little bit more because I'm not on a budget trying to make this cheap. And I'm only cooking this, at this point, long enough to evaporate off the majority of the alcohol. And I want to get it down to dryness. Now I'm going to add two ladle bowls, 120 milliliters, each one's uh, two ounces or 60 milliliters of that beef ragu base. And we're going to cook this for a few minutes. The next step after this is going to be adding the, the half and half, the cream. Some recipes, uh, the old recipes, don't even call for this. There is no cream in it. These days, it's one of those things that most people expect, but use it judiciously. This will temper the flavor, it will make it mellower, but it will also destroy some of the flavor if you're not careful. So use it very judiciously. I'm going to add like just a tablespoon. That's it. Don't go nuts on the cream here. This is not a cream sauce. It's very easy to ruin with too much milk or, or cream. Okay, pasta has been cooking four to seven minutes. It's supposed to. I'm going to transfer it over so that it actually it isn't completely finished cooking. The package directions are for very al dente. In this case, I know this brand of pasta. So, it's, uh, it's going to finish up cooking in the sauce, which is the way it should be. And now I'm going to add some parmesan. It's again, like a tablespoon and a half, something like that. And this is too dry now, as you can see. And that's actually it's what you want because you're going to use the pasta water to um, remoisten it, and it's also one of the sorts of one of the ingredients. So I'm going to add uh, a couple of ladles of the water the pasta was cooking in. It's again, 120 milliliters, two, two ladles. And I'm going to cook this just until it comes together. Also look for my cocktail book, Cocktails of the South Pacific and Beyond, Advanced Mixology, available through Amazon online.